So um, first off, what is your education? Like, what's your background? Well, I have uh, three degrees in music. So I have an associate's degree in fine arts with a major in music with honors, and then also a bachelor's of music from North Carolina School of the Arts. And I liked it there so much that I stayed and I got my graduate degree. So I have a master's of music in opera performance. Nice. Yeah. In opera performance. Yeah. And then I, um, <laughs> I graduated and promptly moved to New York City where I started auditioning for musical theater. <laughs> As you do. So I have a yeah. classical background, completely classical background in training. Um, and then everything else um, I learned, which my my passion is musical theater. I mean, let's be real. I do crossover some some crossover stuff, but really for me, I'm I'm musical theater all the way. So everything I learned in musical theater, I learned in New York from my teachers in New York and from experience from actually doing it. So, so yeah. So the degree was a good thing, but it also wasn't necessarily your track. Right. So I don't I don't regret the degree. Um, I stayed in school probably a little bit too long to get it, but, and mm -hmm. I never really used it until like professionally speaking, I never used the degree until I moved to Florida and they hired me at a university here. So thank goodness I had a master's degree or I would not have um, the job at the university, but um, I learned so much from the training that I got at, at school that I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm a very versatile singer because of the training that I got. Um, mm -hmm. in, the, in the classical world so yeah for sure I mean I think that opera and classical training is it should be everybody's stepping stone it's really. like so I I relate it to ballet and dance you know so if you're if you're relating it to to dancing um you know about everyone should have everyone who is a dancer should have ballet like you start with ballet like this is the basis of all technique in dance is about it comes from ballet Right. Um, I feel the same way about classical music. Uh, the classical training that I got was based, like that's my foundation. Like it's, it's what I base everything on from there. So I feel like I can do crazy stuff with my voice because I know how everything works. And I, and I had that, that background in, in, um, at school. Um, I don't regret it at all. In fact, I'm very grateful for it. Not only that, but I also learned how to read music. So I feel like, you know, a lot of, if you're in musical theater, you would know like a lot of people just bring in the recorders and they record people, but I can actually, I can play, um, not, I don't accompany very well, but I can play music on the piano and like teach myself. And I feel like that came in very handy um, in my career and still continues to, so. And you're able to communicate with people on stage better, I think, when you know how to read music. You know, you you have a you have a different perspective. Um, yeah, being able to communicate with with the orchestra or with the conductor, you know. Yeah, for sure. It makes it it makes things easier too. I think for for us as performers, when when we can follow a score, I think. Yeah. Well, I would see. So, um, I actually get to do narrations with the orchestras down here in Florida, and. Um, if I didn't know how to read music, I would not be able to narrate for them because I actually get the full score and I have to follow all the instruments to know like when I come in and when I stop and when, you know what I mean? So it, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to have a job like that if I didn't, if I didn't have that training behind me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's actually a really cool sounding job. That sounds like fun. It's pretty great. <laughs> <sweet. laughs> you have to talk a little bit about that. That wasn't something I was going to ask you, but now that you brought it up, I'm curious. <laughs> people are too because I, I would never have thought that that would be a job right oh yeah I get to do it. it's so it's it's part of the educational outreach program that they do at artist Naples mm -hmm. and um they they re we recorded this year because of COVID but um usually I have a live audience of kids so uh, yeah. they fill the house with these kids and then I tell it's a story that the they um, commission composers to come in and write these stories that include um, how to learn about the orchestra. So like, these are the instruments in the orchestra, but it, it's, they're told within a story. So um, I have this story that I'm narrating and I'm doing it with the orchestra. So it's almost like they're my, you know, they're my co 
cast, you know, so I'm, it's like with them, I'm talking back and forth with them. And then the conductor teaches the kids about, you know, dynamics and how to conduct and like, you know, like the different sections of the orchestra. And um, so it's actually quite fun. And I've been doing it for the past, I would say five years, they hire me to do it every year. So it's quite a good gig. Um, and I enjoy it because I, there's nothing like being on stage with a full orchestra. Yeah. So, and even though I'm not singing, and actually I do some singing with them depending on the show that they have, but, um, you know, it's actually, it's, it's really neat. It's a neat little job. That sounds fantastic, you know, and you wouldn't be able to do that if you didn't know how to read music. So it's absolutely true. <laughs> it makes you more versatile. It, yes. And that's, that's something Definitely. that I think. You know, I think a lot of people choose one path and they forget that they could have a whole world of, of options open for them. And I remember myself singing in a band while I was in college, hiding it from my teacher, getting the leads in the opera, being in the, the, the chamber choir, you know, and also not like then singing in a band, you know, from nine o'clock PM till 1 AM, <laughs> you know, and that, but that was my money and that was but you know, I, I, like six years into it, I finally told my voice teacher, "Hey, I'm doing this," and she said, "That's fine. Just you know, sing with good technique and don't be around cigarette smoke." Just exactly. exactly. Why didn't I tell you that six years ago? <laughs> <laughs> Could have gotten some uh, more more lessons in singing pop. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny that you say that because I actually called myself a closet belter when I was in college, because I was in the classical program, I never told my teachers I would ever, like as belting is taboo to people, you know, to the, in the classical world. Um, we think it is. We think it is. And, and my kids, my kids think it, is, think it is as well. They're very scared to belt, um, but I did it. Oh my gosh, I did it. Cause it just felt so good. <laughs> yeah. But if you do it properly, it's not going to damage your voice. Absolutely you know? not. Absolutely. So, not. I don't have a problem with it myself. And I also don't have a problem with teaching it, teaching you know, it. but I think like we started out saying, it's important to have the classical foundation, no matter what. I think so. So, well, I'm glad we're on the same page about that <laughs> that's a good thing because, um, you know, I think that's th that a lot of singers, like I said, they leave that out and they think, oh, it's too hard to get a degree and, or, oh, that's an unnecessary type of degree. No, actually, if you want to be a professional singer, mm -mm, it's very important. It's very important. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it has served me well, for sure. Good. 